it's nice to meet y'all. My name is Matthew Chester. Uh, I live in New Orleans. My handle is at FFMadJester. Uh, we're going to be covering the waiver wire every Tuesday for you at JWB. And uh, we're going to cover ads, drops, and diagnostics every week to make sure that you can stay ahead of your league. Welcome. You're listening to JWB Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening. So let's roll right into ads this week. And my number one player is Tyler Algier. He is slightly above 50% rostered, but he should be 100% rostered. Uh, 58% rostered. He got RB4 on the week. His usage was incredible. He showed us what he could do last year uh, in the Arthur Smith Atlanta offense with over a thousand yards. Uh, Arthur Smith is terrible for fantasy pass catchers, but what he loves to do is run. He's a grinder. He's an old head coach. Uh, he's going to be miserable to the other team. He's going to be miserable to everybody that has Drake London or Kyle Pitts or Desmond Ritter. But what he's going to be good for is running backs. And we see that in Bijan, and we saw it again this week in Tyler Algier. He should keep seeing the volume that he had today. Is 15 rushes for 75 yards. That's five yards a pop and two touchdowns on the ground. He also caught all three targets for 19 yards and got almost 25 PPR fantasy points. This guy would be my number one priority on waivers if he's available in your league. Uh, another interesting duo this time of running backs is Gus Edwards and Justice Hill up in Baltimore. Gus Edwards is 21% owned. Justice Hill is 0% owned. Now, what's interesting about them is Dobbins is out for the year. Unfortunately, he got his... Uh, Achilles was torn and uh you know you hate to see it it's it's a death sentence for these guys but it does leave the backfield wide open now Justice Hill when he filled in today he had eight touches he only got nine yards extremely inefficient he did show up in the box score though because he did have two touchdowns on the ground but I want to warn you all this guy is a landmine the team doesn't believe in him uh, those two touchdowns are going to lead some of your league mates astray. Let them take the bait. That's fine. Now, Gus, I do like a lot. He's in a six year, all with the same team up in Baltimore because the team loves him. They re-signed him uh, over and over, and he's got a career five yards per over five yards per carry. So if there's somebody who's going to be the number one RB in Baltimore, I'm going to put my flag on Gus Edwards. Another duo, we're going to switch over to wide receiver, a duo that was really interesting behind an injured stud is Puka Nakua and Tutu Atwell. They're the wide receivers for the uh, Los Angeles Rams with Matt Stafford. Puka is only owned in 11% of leagues and Tutu is owned in 7% of leagues. Now, Puka is probably going to be the person that most people go after because he was a stud. He put up 21.9 PPR points with uh, 10 catches on 15 targets and Tutu got six catches on eight targets for the same exact 119 yards. Tutu got uh, almost 18 PPR points. So look, Cooper Cup is going to be out for at least three more weeks. These guys will be usable if you're in trouble at wide receiver. It happens. These guys are going to be usable for at least three more weeks. And who knows what's going to happen with Cooper Cup coming back. He's hitting that age cliff. We, uh, it's a soft tissue injury with his hamstring. We're just not sure on the timeline. And uh, these guys are fine fill-ins for right now. Another pass catcher. In tight end, Hunter Henry up in New England. He's only owned in 7% of leagues, but he was the tight end one this week. Now, we were told all offseason that he'd be a big part of the New England offense, and it's just hard to believe in that offense. It's hard to believe in anything Bill Belichick says. They went and got Mike Gusecki. We've just we've seen this song and dance before, but tight end landscape is kind of bleak. So if he's on your waiver wire, which means it's 93% chance he is. Uh, he's definitely worth an ad because uh, I'll be honest with you, in my home league, my first pick was Travis Kelsey and my second pick was Mark Andrews because I just love going bully tight end. That really left me in a bind this week because they were both out and Hunter Henry would have been wonderful and he's free. So uh, put a little claim on him. 
Uh, let's switch back to running back. And a player that I like is Roshan Johnson, the rookie up in Chicago. Uh, he's owned in 31% of leagues. Now he did go, he did have five rushes this week for only 20 yards. It's decent. Uh, it's four yards carry. He did get a rushing touchdown. So he showed up in the box score in the box score. He'll be on your league mates radar because of that. But what I really like about this player is he had seven targets. He caught six of them and he got 35 receiving yards. So that's six and a half points right there, just in the receiving game. Uh, that's a really nice place to be in PPR leagues. And I don't know how they're going to keep that offense going the way that it's going. It was pretty abysmal today. It was a nasty loss. It's probably got some people reeling on their early round picks for Justin Fields, but uh, his a dot today was like under five yards. It was really ridiculous. And as long as that's the case, Roshan Johnson should keep seeing the looks that he's getting. That's a nice place to be. So for now, Roshan's a nice little add too. We can switch over to another running back. Uh, that's Rams running back, Kyron Williams, not Cam, A Cam Akers. So Kyron Williams is owned in 6% of leagues. He's a pretty forgotten about guy. It's a pretty nasty, like just uninspiring offense. But they did well today. Kyron Williams had 15 rushes for 52 yards. He did have two touchdowns. Uh, if you do the math on that, it's only three and a half yards per carry, which is not great, but a touchdown here and there can save you. He's not a priority of mine. The thing that really stands out, stands out in this game is that Cam Akers had 22 carries for only 29 yards. So that's unsustainable and somebody's going to have to step up in this backfield. I don't know if it's going to be Cam Akers. I don't know if it's going to be Kyron Williams. It might even be rookie Zach Evans. but there are better options on waivers than any Rams RB right now. Uh, I'm going to finish this with another receiver in Zay Jones. Uh, 16 and a half points this week, wide receiver 17. He got five catches on seven targets for 55 yards and a touchdown. It's moderate. It's usable every week as a, a an exact mid wide receiver too. But what's interesting to me is that he's second on the team in targets down in Jacksonville in a Trevor Lawrence offense. That's never a bad place to be. So if you guys have any ideas about who you want to pick up, be sure to leave them in the comments. Uh, you can leave who you are thinking about dropping and we'll rate it for you and tell you whether it's worth it or not. You can also join us in the discord. We're always happy to help. Love keeping up and uh, love watching y'all make moves. So, segue to segment two drops. Now, the player that I'm going to start with with drops is Deion Jackson, Indianapolis Colts running back. And the only reason I'm bringing him up, uh, he's only owned 56%. So, he, he barely makes it into this drops category. But the reason that I'm bringing him up is I saw somebody this last week spent a hundred percent of their year's fab free agent acquisition budget on Deion Jackson. So we saw him get 15 points a game, uh, once last year, I think he had a 28 point week once last year when he's in there, he's generally pretty usable. He was not this week. It was bad, but JT is out for three more weeks. Evan Hull is the exciting athletic new young rookie who we're thinking might take over. Deion Jackson being the uh, stand-in for JT while he's out. But Evan Hull is out with injury, and that's worth monitoring. So because of all that in, the, in Deion Jackson's situation, uh, I want to drop him, but I'm definitely going to hold him another week. So let's move on to wide receivers. Odell Beckham is no longer Odell Beckham. He's owned in 83% of leagues. We had some people with high hopes from this year. It didn't look pretty. They played it. Baltimore played without Mark Andrews, their number one target. And you think that he could make something happen without their number one target there. Zay Flowers took over. Zay Flowers looks electric. I hope that he's owning your leagues. Um, he's a starter until. Uh, but OBJ, two catches on three targets for 37 yards. 
it would have to be a much deeper league than a redraft standard league to want to have OBJ still on my roster, which puts me to Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony out in Kansas City. I don't want to deal with the headache of who might have a single blow up game because this week it was nobody in Kansas City. Kelsey was out and nobody stepped up. Sky Moore, fantastic name, electric. Tony, um, same thing. There's, there's nobody that can juke people out like Tony. But it's a fool's errand to decide which wide receiver you want to start in Kansas City, and I would rather let my league mates fight over those landmines. So drop them on waivers, maybe even do it before waivers clear tomorrow just to distract them from the people you want want actually rostered with more upside and hopefully eventual reliability. Um, that brings us to Traylon Burks, the next wide receiver on the drops list. I don't feel comfortable with him here, but it's a name that stands out at 80% owned on Sleeper. Today he had two catches for three uh, on three targets, just like OBJ, and he only had 18 yards. So the Tennessee offense is not it. And as long as D-Hop is healthy, there's just nothing left there for Burks in the receiving game. It's going to be Derrick Henry, it's going to be DeAndre Hopkins, and that's it. And unless something changes, Burks is a really exciting name, especially in Dynasty, but he's just not fun to start or even roster in these redraft leagues. So let's move on from him to Dalton Schultz, who some people some people thought he would repeat his tight end one. I was one of those people. I wasn't excited about him and I didn't draft him, but it's worth talking about because he's 81% owned. The Houston offense is terrible. The Houston team is terrible. They've been the punching bag of the league for as long as I can remember, deservedly so. Two catches on four targets for a whopping four yards for Dalton Schultz. There's just no opportunity there. I'm ready to move on from every part of Houston, and that's all I have to say about that. Let's move from Houston over to Washington with Antonio Gibson, who has shown capabilities both in college when he was a receiver and translated it to the NFL. And his in two out of his first three years, he was a he ended the year as an RB one. So of course he has the ability to do it again, right? Well, he's getting the doghouse treatment in the first game, and he's going to continue getting doghouse treatment because he had a three-yard average for nine yards on three carries and a fumble. I don't see anything happening for Antonio Gibson anytime soon. If he gets traded, it's interesting. You don't want him on your roster in the meantime. It's really sad about Antonio Gibson, but I'm going to move on. And it's another person that I might want to drop to the waivers before uh, waiver clears just as a landmine for other people to snatch up. Now let's move into the more difficult part of the show. It's going to be the health diagnostics where we look at injuries this past week and how we feel about the players involved. I want to run through a few really quickly to start off with because it's really hard to see this happen. Aaron Rodgers and J.K. Dobbins both had torn Achilles today. Aaron Rodgers, it's hard to see him coming back next year. He's definitely out for redraft. J.K. Dobbins is in the final year of his contract. It's tough seeing what they're doing to running backs these days uh, as far as leaving him for the for dead. And in the final year of his contract, J.K. Dobbins is droppable in redraft, and you just want to get out of him in dynasty any way possible. Not much more to say about those guys. Bless them, you know. Give me your thoughts. Um, I, I, as far as their backups, we've talked about Gus Edwards. We've talked about uh, Justice Hill. Uh, for Aaron Rodgers, I have no interest in Zach Wilson unless it's a very deep super flex league. He didn't perform well tonight, even though they got the win against Buffalo. Uh, we've we've seen Zach Wilson. I've seen enough. Uh, it really does suck for Garrett Wilson as well. Probably a second round draft pick, if not a first round draft pick. 
and I don't know how well he's going to do. The splits last year were terrible. Uh, really sad to see these things happen. So let's move on. Cooper Cup, a little bit more promising. Uh, Four-week timeline at the last minute put on IR. We have to deal with that. Not sure what you want to do with him in redraft. I don't know how comfortable you feel making it through these next four weeks. Depends on what your score was. Depends on how your depth is elsewhere. Uh, everybody's store is a little bit different. We know what Cooper Cup can do. Matt Stafford is looking just fantastic for what he has. And when he gets Cooper Cup back at full health, Cooper Cup will be a, a league winner again. So if you can be patient, be patient. If you can't, I totally understand. And you know what? Maybe it's okay to get off the risk too. So status for next week, injured reserve, out for three more games at least. Uh, Travis Kelsey does not have that same IR designation. He was a last minute uh, cancellation for the game. And what happened with him was right uh, the, the week before week one, he hyperextended his knee. It was just, it was a bone bruise. So it's probably looking like a week or two. Definitely worth monitoring. He's getting older. So it's a little bit worrisome. He avoided anything terrible, but keep it in mind that he's going to, I think he's 34 years old right now. Also keep it in mind that he's a league winner. So, you know, just depends on your tolerance risk and what you can stomach. Uh, speaking of tight ends, a player that I want to talk about in the injury section is Zach Ertz, the unsexiest tight end over the last seven years who continues to be a wide receiver one. The reason we're bringing him up is because he had an injury midway through last year. And honestly, at his age, I didn't think that he'd be coming back. Maybe at all. Definitely not this early week one. And I don't know why he wants to keep playing for Arizona, but he's a culture fit. I think he's worked with the coaches before and with Jonathan Gannon over in Philly. So Jonathan Gannon probably wants to keep him around. Uh, while he's, you know, getting his feet wet as a new head coach and Zacherts is probably going to be a staple. He showed that, uh, this week by leading the Cardinals in targets and receptions. It's just amazing to me that he's right back in it so soon after an ACL in his thirties, uh, for a team that we think are just trying to blow it up and rebuild for next year, but he's a viable weekly starter again, and he's only 11% rostered. So I missed him in the ads column, but Zach Ertz is a huge ad right now. Go get him. He's free. Let's stick with tight ends and go to Darren Waller. This is another little bit of good news with his injury. He came up with a hamstring designation. Uh, a few weeks before a few days before the game and as all the tight ends were just falling by the left and right uh Darren Waller somehow made it to game day and played looks good for him to play next week he unexpl he unexpectedly played this week and he paced all New York Giants pass catchers in receptions and yardage sadly that means that he tied for three catches on five five targets and he led all receiving with only 36 yards. It's really gross. New York's not going to get blown out 40 to nothing again. It's a freak occurrence. Darren Waller's still good. He's healthy for now. Uh, ride the roller coaster. Don't panic on Darren Waller. Uh, one last player that I want to end on for Monday Night Football is Brees Hall returning from injury, also returning from a midseason ACL tear in October. We can rejoice. This guy looks fantastic. 10 carries for 127 yards. The first play of the game, I got chills. The first play of the game, 26-yard carry. His next rush went for 83 yards. This dude's back. It's crazy, and he's just going to get better. So Brees Hall, we're going to end injuries on Brees Hall because, thank goodness, there are things to be happy about. He also had a reception for 20 yards. But I hope you all enjoyed the show. Uh, that's pretty much it. You can always get in on constant conversation and ask any questions you need to get in the JWB discord. Uh, you can join the Patreon, get in-depth responses, personalized responses, um, personally text us to all start sit for less than a dollar a week. Uh, there's also a clips catalog on our website, uh, take on every player organized and hyperlink for ease of search. Uh, you can look for us on Twitter. All things JWB will keep you up to date. We'll smoke your league. Give you all the info you need to know. 
Uh, it's at JWB underscore FF on Twitter. You can follow me personally at FF Mad Jester. Like and subscribe for daily full episodes and player clips galore. Now, here's the outro. Thanks for following, guys.